so in my last video, I mentioned how I don't have a gym membership currently. Um, this footage I have from about two weeks ago. So I have a new job now working as a youth, I guess, like health technician or like um, youth counselor in a group home. Um, and just basically helping kids who have had issues, you know, like uh, have criminal charges, but are serving alternative sentencing in this program. Right. So they live in a house. And I watch them, like, I make sure that, like, we know that they're safe or, like, that they're doing their, their school, their tasks, their chores, whatever. They're just trying to learn good habits so that they can be rehabilitated and go back into, go back to their homes, wherever. But anyways, through this job, you know, we take them out and do things sometimes. And we came to this rec center. And so they stamped my hand, um, which we bought a day pass for all the kids. And I was able, they let me go in for free because I was, like, I was basically, uh, I'm, I'm their supervisor. So anyways, I had this stamp on my hand and I realized like, hey, I can come get a workout here later. So I, I uh, after work, I went back and and this is going to be my last front squat, front squat workout for a long time, I guess, until I can figure out my gym membership. But in, if you watch the last video, that's where I explained what's going on. Anyway, so I don't have a gym membership, but this is my last workout, I guess. And it was a really good one, actually. A lot of uh, high volume. I was able to do a lot of different uh, variations, you know, a lot of different uh, exercises. My goal really is to improve my uh, my thoracic. I don't know what to call it. My thoracic strength, or like the the supporting muscles that keep your the thoracic spine, which is the upper portion of your back, the the spinal erectors that keep that part of your body rigid, that keep it um, upright. Those muscles have needed developing for a while, and so I've been doing a lot of overhead pressing a lot of isometric holds overhead and now i've been doing front squats for like a month now um i've seen a major improvements in everything you know i play volleyball and so seeing um the carryover from front squatting into volleyball has been awesome to see the the athleticism my i guess my athleticism has gone up and whatnot um but i i just want now so i i want to talk about i guess front squatting i feel like it's the most um, outside of just like a pure deadlift, I think those two combined deadlift and front squats are the most functional movements that you can do. Um, and functional meaning like that they go in line with your biomechanical um, function. So like what your body is made to do by nature. So overhead pressing is a, is a third place, but like I think you lift things from the ground more than you lift things overhead. I think overhead is a continuation or a progression of that. So most of the time, if you're lifting something, it's going to be from the ground up. And so that's why I think front squatting and like, for example, if you've ever lifted furniture um, and if you've done front squatting, you'll know that they feel the exact same. Like they feel the same exact muscle groups targeted when you're lifting furniture as compared to a front squat. Because very rarely are you um, the leverage of lifting something. Are you lifting something that's behind you like for a back squat? The back squat is the more popular one because people can put up more numbers on the bar. You can put up uh, more weight. But front squatting is the most functional, in my opinion, because um, it not only does it work your like your obviously your legs, your hips, core and back, but it also um, exercises your upper uh, like your shoulder muscles because you have to keep those elbows in a locked position, maintaining the weight and control. So anyways, those are just some thoughts about front squatting. I'd recommend it to anybody. And if you want to watch a channel where you can learn how to do it, look up squat every day. Or no, look up Ivan Djuric. So I V A N D J U R I C. I just watched one of his videos right before this, and it's what made me want to post this video. So I've had this footage like for um like two weeks now, and I've just been you know lazy getting around to making the video. Sometimes I just don't know what I want to talk about, but there was a point in time where I was watching his videos every day, and they taught me they taught me like really well the fundamentals of squatting. And I heard him mention this one at one point. So right now he has 121,000 subscribers um, and he has, you know, thousands of views per video. He talked about how there was a point in time where he was not sure he wanted to continue making videos because they were not getting views. But he just decided to keep going. And then in the next year, like after that point, um, pretty soon his channel started blowing up. And so he started having the impact and outreach that he dreamed of, where lots of people were able to take from his, his mind, his information so the videos I make, these are the exact same style or format that he does, where he does a, he records his workout and does a voiceover. Obviously, his voice is different. His thoughts are not the same as my thoughts. But I love this style of video because it really helped me a lot. And I think I could uh, make an impact doing the same thing. 
So I was looking at my channel today and I have 202 or no 203 videos I think that I've made and my total views are just like barely in the thousands, you know, like I've I've gotten a uh, like I don't know how many views, like 100 views per month for a while. I I'd have to go back and look at the numbers, but somewhat discouraging numbers, but if you consider how saturated the YouTube uh space is, how many different creators are on here, the fact that I'm still seeing growth, like for example, my videos used to only get five to ten views. Um, the most I've ever gotten was one point seven thousand on a shorter, like a real view that, or a YouTube short, I guess it's called, that kind of got some traction. But anyways, um, my views have gone up by three times, I guess, on average, um, and that is a huge blessing to me. But one thing that's been just been going on lately is how I don't have enough money for the gym membership. And I, I talked about that in the last video, but right now it's like, I really have to just, I have to prove to myself, I am who I think I am, or at least God is who he says he is. And that I'll be able to find a way no matter what I've been dreaming of success for over a year now, for like two years, I've thought about this, about how I want to make content, create things, videos, uh, music, anything that can point people towards God and help them better themselves. I've tried to make those videos and make those that content so that I can have an impact. And recently I've come to the conclusion that it's all about not giving up. Because what if it was just the next thing that you did, the next video you posted, the next uh, thing you created? What if the next time you try is the time it works? And what if you didn't know that, but you just gave up and then it never happened? That is the thought that keeps me going and I will never, ever, ever lose that um, that focus. Because the worst thing that happens if this doesn't blow up is that I myself was transformed as a person, that I myself was able to make an impact on my own thought processes. I was able to improve my linguistic capacity and capability by learning how to speak. I was able to uh, to see myself working out, make corrections to my posture, my form and alignment, which by the way, if you watched in the beginning, my front squat, my hips are horrible because they open up to one side. I feel like I have an imbalance where my body is trying to compensate for some weaknesses. It's something I've been working on. Um, one thing I've, I've had my whole life is I, I don't know if I, I'm going to call them concave knees. I've heard them called knock knees or whatever, where my knee alignment is bad and my knees cave inwards. Um, recently, I've been looking at I'm, I've been brainstorming ways where I could fix that um, through biomechanics. And I think the answer is to have stronger hip flexors and or the hip muscles on the outside. I think they're called adductors or abductors, one of the two. One of those muscles that are on the outside of my hips, those are underdeveloped. And, the, and, and through strengthening those, I can pull my knees out and fix my alignment. The way I realized that is I stood there looking at my knees and I was like, what if I pushed my knees and I focused as hard as I could and poke and po um, sorry, push my knees outwards? What muscle groups would I feel um, attached to those? I did that and I felt my hip muscles um, start to flare up. So anyway, so I've been doing like these uh, sumo variation deadlifts. This is not a full sumo deadlift, but doing these and on my deadlift, if you want to go back a few sets, you can see how on one of them, I actually focus on driving my knees apart because the, the whole process of figuring out your form is really slow. You have to do it from the ground up. You have to do it. Um, you have to look at it ma at a macro level and then at a micro level. So you make the big major adjustments first and then make smaller adjustments after. So now that I've got my deadlift form down for the most part, I was looking at my knees and realized that they could be pushed out further. And as I did that, I felt like exactly what my body needs. Um, I felt the pull in my outer hip muscles, which would make my the activation of those muscles will make them stronger. And over time, it will correct my knee posture, right? That's, that's what I figured out. And so anyways, that's just one last little thought I had. And I'm planning on making these videos, but I'm planning on coming into them with more fire and more focus, trying to make them as best quality as I can so that whoever's listening can have an impact on their personal life through the things that I say. I am no longer making these videos and content just to hit a number. I did that before when I was about to hit 100 videos. I just started making like... Uh, sorry for the French. I made started making shit quality videos, um, pushing out crap because I just in my mind to to validate myself, I needed to hit that number of a hundred. Now looking back, because I didn't think I was gonna continue doing it, but I kid, I did continue. Now that I'm at two hundred, those videos don't even matter because no matter what, I already passed a hundred. So it's important to not think about the numbers. It's important to think about the quality and the and the integrity of your purpose. What are you doing this for? And so. 
I'm going to continue doing this because I can impact people. I know I can in the future. It's a possibility. But that possibility will cease the moment I stop making these videos. So I will keep doing it. I hope anyone watching has a, a great day today. I hope you have success. Keep remembering your purpose and try and figure out ways to teach yourself habits and uh, and mental um you have to teach yourself the the mental traits, the character traits of your of your mind that will lead to success. I don't think that makes sense, but that's what I'm thinking in my head is like what ways of thinking that pro that provide and produce success, you have to adopt those and make them yours. That's all I had to say. And so uh see you guys later. Have a good one.